Thank you for joining us on the test bench. Before we get started, I'd like to apologize for kind of this lobsteriness going on here. Uh, this past weekend, I went tubing on the Shenandoah River, and a peeling sunburn took a not insignificant portion of my face skin. Last time on the test bench, we built a computer with a Pentium 4560G, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 1050, which we named Broadsword. In this video, we'll show you how to get Windows and other software loaded onto it, make it good to go so you can actually use it. You have three options to get a Windows 10 license key. You can pay for a retail copy of Windows 10. It's going to look a lot like this. You can buy OEM key from a website like SCD key, which I'll place a link to in the description. Or you can use an old Windows 7 or Windows 8 license from an old computer you might have lying around. If it's never been upgraded to Windows 10, you put that in when you install Windows 10. Upgrades a license. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to go that last route, you can only use one Windows key on one computer at a time legally, so make sure it's a computer that you no longer use at all. Now, there is a huge gulf in pricing between buying an OEM key for Windows and buying a retail copy that comes in a package like this. The retail copy is going to cost between $80 and $140, depending on the exact version of Windows you get while a Windows 10 Pro key from someplace like SCD key will cost you $14. The reason for that price difference is the retail copies of Windows are a transferable license. You can use this on as many computers as you want, as long as you're not using it on more than one computer at a time. So what that means is you buy a computer in 2012, it breaks, you still have your retail license key for Windows, you can go ahead and install that copy on the new computer. The OEM license is only good for one computer, and that's it. That being said, I haven't seen Microsoft enforce OEM keys any differently than they have retail keys. If you decide to go with the retail option for Windows 10, great. You already have your installation media. And all you have to do is skip ahead to the part of the video where we talk about that. I'll put the timestamp below. If you don't go with the retail option, you need to make your media. Or if you do have a retail option, but something's wrong with your media. Next, we're going to cover how to make your installation USB stick. First, we'll want to find the Windows Media Creation Tool, which we'll need to access on another computer. I'll link the page down below. Once on the page, we'll want to scroll down a little and select the option for Windows 10. On the new page, we want to click on Download Tool Now. That will trigger the download, but sadly won't give us any music from the band tool. The download should be almost instant. Navigate to your Downloads folder and insert the USB stick into the computer you're using for this. Once Windows recognizes the USB stick, we'll run the tool. It normally takes much longer than this, but I'm editing it down so we're not staring at this for 12 minutes. Once it's done, disconnect the USB stick. Next, we'll need to get the computer rebuilt hooked up. First, we'll want to connect the power cable to the power supply. Pay attention to which way the plug is oriented because it will only go in one way. Next, we connect our monitor cable. In this example, we're using DVI, but HDMI and DisplayPort are also options. Be sure you're plugging into the ports in the back of the graphics card, not the ones higher up on the motherboard. Lastly, we plug in our keyboard, mouse, and Windows 10 installation USB stick. Next, we fire up the machine and enter BIOS. It's typically F2 or Dell to enter the BIOS, but the splash screen will inform you of what you need to hint. Once we're in the BIOS, we'll want to make sure we've set up our USB stick to be our primary boot drive. This is going to differ between motherboards, so check your manual. Now that the boot drive is set, we restart the computer and the Windows 10 installation process commences. We want to select a 64-bit installation. This would be a much longer topic in and of itself, 
but there is absolutely nothing to be gained from a 32-bit installation of Windows on modern hardware. Here we want to take our only option and click Install Now, though I don't know if option is the right word because that implies we have choices. At this prompt, you enter your Windows 10 license key, whether you got that from a retail license, an OEM license, or an old computer. I'm not going to do that in this video because I don't feel like having the internet steal the key I bought for this computer. You want to select the installation option that matches your key. I recommend going with Windows 10 Pro since the license on SCD key is only $14. You want to click Next and then accept the boilerplate. You want to select Install Windows Only. I'm not sure why they make that an advanced option. On this next screen, it lists the partitions on the drives on your computer. Since Windows isn't installed yet, the drives aren't assigned letters. From the size of the partitions, we know Drive 0 Partition 2 is the main partition of our solid state drive. This is going to differ from system to system. You're going to get a warning that the partition will be formatted, which you'll accept. Now, we play the waiting game. I'm editing out the load bars, and like Deadpool in his most recent movie, I'm speeding up the timeline. After several load screens and restarts, you'll come to this screen. I always choose Customize because Windows 10 tracks a lot of data by default and offers a lot of features I don't want to use. Don't let my preferences dissuade you from using any of these settings, though. Personalize your speech, typing, and inking input by sending your data to Microsoft. Nope, that's just key logging. Send typing and inking data to Microsoft to improve the recognition and suggestion platform. So, sending the same data for a slightly different reason? That's a negative ghostwriter. Let apps use your advertising ID for experiences across apps. No thanks. Let Skype, if installed, Help you connect with friends in your address book and verify your mobile number. SMS and data charges may apply. They won't apply because I don't use Skype and this isn't a phone. Turn on Find My Device and let Windows and Apps request your location, including location history, and send Microsoft location data to improve location services. This is a desktop, so no. The next screen here is all no because again, Desktop with a wired internet connection doesn't need any of this. Use smart screen online services to help protect against malicious content and downloads and sites loaded by Windows browsers and store apps. Yes, keep that on. Use page prediction to improve reading, speed up browsing, and make your overall experience better in Windows browsers. Your browsing data will be sent to Microsoft. Yeah, no thanks. Two reasons. Um, Microsoft doesn't need my browsing data, and Windows browsers are Edge and Internet Explorer, which we really shan't be using. Get updates from, and send updates to, other PCs on the internet to speed up app Windows update downloads. This one always irked me. Microsoft makes billions of dollars selling their products and by default uses customer computers to store and distribute updates. I think it's fixed now, but originally when this feature came out, people thought their internet was being throttled when it was just them serving Windows updates to other people eating all their bandwidth. We turn this option off. Here you would set yourself up to log in and log out of the computer with a Microsoft account. I'm not going to do that here so that information isn't divulged on the internet. That being said, this is totally up to individual preference. I also just prefer to log in with a local username and password. As for the name on the account, I'm just going to set this to owner because this machine will be changing hands. And a hint on the password for all the viewers at home, how about... No. And Cortana gets a definite not now. I have a mouse and keyboard, and talking to computers is more frustrating than typing at them. Only thing I use voice recognition for is setting timers on my phone when I'm cooking. And now, we're on the desktop. 
The first thing we want to do is fire up Edge and go to Ninite.com. There will be a link in the description. Ninite lets you select from a list of commonly installed programs, then lets you download them in one shot. It automatically says no to bloatware options like the toolbars packaged with Java. The first two things we want to select are Chrome and Firefox. I would not suggest TeamViewer unless you're going to be very careful with the security settings, because hackers have a knack for cracking the default passwords and getting access to computers that didn't change them. We want Discord as it is a superior chat application to all the IM clients I've found, and is also better than Skype. We also want both 7-Zip and WinRAR. You'll want to use 7-Zip for all your zipping and WinRAR for the occasional RAR file WinZip can't open. For media, we're grabbing VLC player for video. Also, Audacity for audio recording and editing. We'll also grab Music B for music. We'll also grab all five options under run times because we'll run into something that uses all of them eventually. We're going to grab Notepad++ from the dev tools because it's everything basic Notepad should be. For image editing, we'll download GIMP. If you're not familiar, the name has nothing to do with bondage and it's a freeware alternative to Photoshop. We'll also grab OpenOffice while we're in the neighborhood so Microsoft doesn't try to foist Office 360 on us. And other than Steam, that'll be it. A lot of people are going to disagree with me for not grabbing SpyBot, Search and Destroy, or Malwarebytes, but my experience the past few years is that if you don't download anything you shouldn't be and keep Windows up to date, Windows Defender will treat you all right. Once we've selected our options, we click Get Your Ninite and run the download. The installer will start working its magic. Here you see it sped up 1000%. Once it's done installing, it will show you a report of what it installed, but wait, what's this? It looks like I downloaded TeamViewer after specifically telling you not to. It's almost like I did it on purpose so I can show you how to uninstall unwanted programs. To do that, open up the start menu and start typing the word add with two D's. A suggestion for add or remove program should pop up. Click on it. Once at the add or remove program screen, type part of the name of the program you want uninstalled until it pops up in the list. Then select it and hit the uninstall button. You could also scroll through the whole list to find it. It's arranged alphabetically. Sometimes a program will ask why you uninstalled it. I either give a non-answer or a wrong answer in those situations, unless I have a specific complaint I want to address with the company. There is one more piece of software I want to download, NVIDIA's GeForce Experience. Again, I'll put a link in the description. Downloading and installing it will allow us to download the latest NVIDIA drivers, record our screen, and help us keep drivers up to date. Once it's downloaded, just follow all the prompts. Now that this is built and the software installed, we get to experience less of this and more of this. When next time on the test bench, we benchmark Doom, Ashes of the Singularity, Destiny 2, Overwatch, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, Far Cry 5, Final Fantasy 15, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Fallout 4. Like this video and subscribe to the Test Bench. Feel free to join us on Facebook. Back us on Patreon if you want to help us show you more cool stuff. And follow us on Twitter. You'll find clickable links in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out our other videos.